In today's video, we're looking at pricing your work. Now, I'm gonna do this as a two part. First of all, I'm gonna select three different stages in my photography career. We're gonna jump onto the computer, I'm gonna show you the quality of the work I was producing, and then how much I was charging whilst producing that quality of work, and what my clients looked like. Now, the second part of this video, I want you to send me in your work, let me know how much you're charging, and I'm gonna tell you what I think you should be charging. Or if you're just completely lost, just say so. You can find my email address either within the Facebook group, which will be a link to below. You can either send me a DM on Instagram and I'll have a link to my Instagram account below as well. And I'll send you an email address that you can send me some of your work to and some information. And for the next video, I'm gonna be talking about your work and explaining exactly how I would approach the pricing of it and where I think you could sort of maybe adjust a few little pieces here and there. Now I've been a photographer for over a decade. I started off my first ever invoice was for 75 pounds. Since then I've charged considerably more, but it's been a slow journey and it's been a confused journey. Now I started off being a portrait photographer and I've ended up being a commercial food photographer, but I'm gonna try and make it all seem cohesive within this. So let's jump into the computer, look at my work and just see where I was, where I came from and how my work has adapted over time and how the prices reflected that. So what we have here are a selection of images. Um, they're not in chronological order because I've took some good shots early on and some bad shots recently. Um, but hopefully they make the point. So this is the first little selection of images. And what we have here are the cafe and restaurant photography people. And this is where I started. I had a studio and part of my rental agreement was to photograph once a month the menus and the cocktails and food and drink, all that jazz for a local bar chain who happened to own the property that I was renting. Now, at the time I was a portrait photographer, so I was actually commanding reasonable fees for my portrait work, maybe 500 pounds a shoot. Um, but my food work, as you can see here, pretty, pretty bad. Um, the sauce, you can see it's liquefied and leaking out. The colors look like they're about to turn radioactive. I'm not sure what to do with the vibrancy there. The lighting is just pounding in there. I've used a wrong shape modifier. I've used an octobank on these, so I've not got the great catch lights I wanted. Well, I didn't want them back then. I didn't know about them. Um, it's just the styling is not right, not in terms of the styling of the food, more the, the choice of items within there. Um, they're just, you know, ignore the next shot, but there we go. They weren't great. When I, was at the, when I was at this stage, I probably could have got a local cafe to pay me £150 to photograph their entire menu. And that's fine. It is a valid starting point in your career. And if you're at this point where you're shooting for cafes, that's about the budget they have. They don't have big books um, unless they're a chain. And if they're a chain, they're probably not hiring you. They're also not going to pay you more if you get better. This is sort of a whatever you're doing now, this is it. And when we get a bigger cafe or we, we become a chain, we'll move on to someone else. And I've had that with clients. I've had clients move on to new photographers because they've become a chain when I started out. And they won't come back to me because even though now I'm sort of far beyond what they can afford or justify. They would never ask me for a quote because they still see me as this photographer, the amateur photographer, the person who doesn't really know how to conduct business, the person who doesn't really know how to shoot, you know, a bit of a nightmare to work with, lots of demands, you know, all that sort of nuisance stuff that the beginner photographers have. And it's part of the learning experience. There is no shame. It was a fun time. It was a good time. I enjoyed doing this. I thought I was doing a good job in hindsight. I mean, the drink is wonky. The raspberry is part frozen. The glass is dirty. I think it's cracked at the bottom here. There's stuff, it is awful. I mean, I like the bokeh because when you're beginning a photographer, it's all about the bokeh. You want to shoot everything at 1.2, 1.4, 1.8, get that blurry background. Whereas, as you'll see as my work progresses, we're hitting the F10, F16 field at the end of it. But this is a good beginner point. Now, if you're a portrait photographer, get in touch hit me up on Instagram, links below. I want to do one of these for portrait photographers, but I need to use your work because I jumped out of portrait before I got to getting a really good fee. So I'd love to use some of your work as examples, whether you're a top photographer, beginner, you just don't know where, we, where you are. You don't know which category you fall into here. But right now we're looking at these beginner photographers, 150 pounds. You're not making a living from this. This is a starting point. This is where you put the work in to get better. You work out your workflow systems. You're probably going to lose somebody's work at some point and have a nightmare. But this is just practice time. This is where you're learning. 
So I carried on. I, I never had a plan to be a food photographer and I started shooting more. And you can see here the cohesion. So from this shot here, um, where the, the props don't really make sense apart from their pub props on random backgrounds and the glasses are not great and the food looks okay, but it's just, it's not a great food shot. The composition's pretty bad on my part. And here we have a nicely composed image. And I've started to see the colors, the triangles, the groups of three, ways to sort of tell a story and bring the eye round the board. Now, let's not kid ourselves, this is not groundbreaking work, but it started to get better. Now this shot was actually taken further a long time ago. Um, I think Tom styled this, I might be wrong. Tom or Sophie styled this, and they both have background businesses now. And I think they're both style as well. Um, I think they also do content creation. They do quite a lot. They have like a bit of a, I think each of them has their own independent sort of one-stop shop for social stuff. Um, but this is a much better shot. We've got the, the threes, the groupings of threes, the props make sense, the styling makes sense, the whole setting makes sense. Um, I know for a fact that I didn't own any specific food kit back then. I had a, a softbox, an 85mm portrait lens and a Canon camera. Um, but my shots were getting better they'll start to be more focused on the food. And this all stems from a conversation I had with a photographer called Howard Shooter. And he reviewed that early work that I just showed you. And he basically said, the thing about being a food photographer is, Scott, that you have to make the food look good. And I was trying to get the lighting to look good, the post-production to look good. Everything I was trying to make look good, but not the food. Whereas you'll see the difference here. If you look at this food here, and if we go back again to this food here or this drink, you can see how all of a sudden the food is the hero. Yes, it's not groundbreaking work. But at this point, I was charging about £800 a day. And the work here, when it was at this level, and this is not in chronological order, I actually shot this when I was charging far more, but it just wasn't a great shot. I just, I didn't have it on the day. But the, the quality of work here is usable for small adverts, social media campaigns. £800 a day is a pretty good pretty good point when you're at this i don't think it's what i was charging at this stage but you know the flat lays they've got good styling again i shot this a lot later on in my career um but there's a few faults with it but you know it's starting to look good it's starting to look stylized but i guarantee you although they won't be able to produce it for an ad campaign to brief there'll be someone with an iphone doing better work than this and a lot of photography it comes down to being able to do what you're told not what you want Anyone can take a pretty picture, that's easy. What's difficult is when the client has very specific requests and that you have to make them come to life. That's where being a professional photographer comes in and this is your 800 pounds a day work. If your portfolio looks like this, 800 pounds a day, you're on to a winner. And again, with these two shots, they're good, but they're not perfect. They're close, but they're not quite there. There's some faults with the composition, with the styling, with the prop sourcing, the background to item options. It's just, you know, it was part of a busy test shoot week and um, things things were let slip that shouldn't have been. The camera angle is not quite right on this. The, you can see there's like a pip missing here that I've not photoshopped. I mean, I've actually fixed this in post, but I found this version just to show you here. Um, the background, we shot this with a 100 megapixel camera on a paper background, which is a, a no-go. If you print this, it looks awful. Um, this is on a wooden board. If you print this, it looks actually really good. But this is, you know, this is your £800, maybe £1,000 a day. You're probably not getting licensed fee work. Um, at this point, I was actually shooting worldwide campaigns, but of course, you don't nail every shoot. But this is the quality of work you should be producing consistently. This is like the worst shot you do should be coming out like this. Okay, this again was shot very early. I think this is one of the first food photos I shot with a stylist in this studio and Sophie styled this and it was on one of her backgrounds, I think, or Tom's backgrounds, I can't remember. And I really liked it. It was a great shot. It always goes down well on social media. It's good for Instagram use for web content. It doesn't print well. It's not good for portfolio, but it is good for like social media content. And again, I was charging around 800 pounds to a thousand pounds a day at this point. Again, this is the meat shot, which is a bit of like a a test of how good you are at photography with food. If you can make raw meat look okay, you're doing good. And this, we shot this in a phase and Holly styled this. The background is made out of the old um, potting things that were used for trees in the Leicester city centre that went to a scrapyard. I salvaged a bunch of them. 
And again, here's a shot as part of a workshop. And you can see the complexity of the compositions improving. This is like a £1,200 a day sort of level of work these two are. The storytelling's there. This is the British pub garden. We've got the sun dipping down below the trees, casting this like nice warm glow through here whilst the rest of it's in the shade. This is all created artificially in the studio. And we use like three, four lights and gels. I went and chopped down a tree outside for a bit of a gobo. You know, we've got the right beer selections, the right snack selections, it all, everything is here for this shot. There's things we could do to make it at my current level of work, but it's now fallen out of favor with my style. But this here is your solid 1200 pounds a day shooting ad campaign sort of work. When you can produce this, you can get a good story going on. That's when you sort of get into the point where people take notice, I think. This here was shot for Delhi France. And this was part of a monster mammoth shoot. We shot an obscene amount of stuff over like an eight day campaign. And everything was this quality. Everything was this quality. And we must have delivered 300 shots at the end of it. And they were all this good. Now this is not groundbreaking work. It's not one shots where we spent the whole day doing it. But we nailed out this consistent flow of work. The food was just coming out. We were shooting it. It was a small crew. It was 39 degrees. It was hot. It was sweaty. We worked our ass off and we just continually, every shot came out like this. And again, I'm not saying this is groundbreaking work, it definitely isn't, but the volume of work at this level that we produced over that week and a bit shooting was just all like this. And that's a good sign, it's the consistency, the continuity, and just being able to just pull it out whenever it's asked for, however they want it. And again, we're just sort of getting to that storytelling and the understanding of the shots. The understanding of the rusticness, we've got the 1950s Bialati, the metal ice cubes, the tray with the glasses on, the smoke glass. It's all starting to come together in a story and everything makes sense. Now, if we go back a bit, just as you know, to the beginning, there's no story. There's no, there's, there's, no, there's no story there. It's not saying anything. It's just, here, have some food. This is food. And we come across to this here and it's like, here's food made pretty. And then as we venture further forward, we start to see the storytelling and the stories become more and more apparent. And this is where the images really start to become good. It's not the technical ability, which obviously you need for this, but it's that storytelling that trying to bring people in to feel what it's like to have the food. And obviously this differs genre to genre. Now this is where we sort of get a bit more stylized, really understanding the difference in styles, the storytelling, the ambience, the feeling. And then we sort of come towards my more recent work. Now, I'm not one for saying how much I charge per day, um, but the fee would be higher than before. And we'd be looking at license fees, production fees, um, charging for camera usage, studio usage. We'd be billing on top of my day rate for assistance, digital text, retouches, renting the studio on top of the fee, and then the licensing fees as well that come in with it. Now, I've produced work better than this a long time ago, um, but there's no chronology to this because sometimes clients want you to produce work that isn't good and it pays the bills, so you just suck it up and do it. But here we've got concept work. Now, we actually copied this from another photographer I can't remember the name of. They did it on a white background with us. A different vibe. We went for a pop-up version of his work. Did a YouTube video on it. It's um, behind the scenes in a food photo shoot if you want to see this. This is a test shoot. Um, but yeah, this is again, this was with the test sheet as well with Natalie from Wilbur and Wolf who do the um, fabrics for your styling. And it was just this next level, the production of the, the set, the styling, the storytelling. But what you'll notice is the simplicity. Because now rather than having to have all these elements to tell the story, I sort of decided that actually I want to tell the story as simply as possible and just get the point there. And this is when I noticed my feed that I was commanding just went up astronomically. Again, pop art styling, very bold, very graphic. This is your 1990s childhood here. It's like a bit of coffee stuff, the sort of thing you might see for Starbucks, Costa, you know, your beans, your grind, your filter, your cup, your drink, your coffee stain. It's like a storytelling, very simple, very graphic. It's commercially viable, but it's also in my personal taste. This is what I think looks good. Whereas when I was shooting this, this is what I thought people thought looked good. And they're two very different things. Now, they're both good images. Some people prefer this. Some will prefer this. This shot here commercially is worth far more 
than this shot. This is a pretty photograph. This will do well on Pinterest. It does well on Instagram. This will do well with art buyers in ad campaigns. You know, you can see this on a bus stop with Starbucks logo at the bottom of it. It makes sense. So that is where the difference really comes in. It's when you can sort of see your work having that value to a customer. You know, it's showing the journey through the coffee making process. And that coffee making process might be something that a brand is really trying to drill down. It's not just that we have cafes, it's not that we have coffee, but this is the process we go through to make our coffee. And again, with a 1990s childhood sort of theme, this particular image I've included at the end because this is what all the art buyers at the moment love. This is the shot that everyone goes, we love your spaghetti hoops photograph. And um, if I'd have seen this, it would go way back here. When I was at this point here, I'd have gone, yeah, but this photograph's way more fancy. It's got the blurry background, you know, it's got the shallow depth of field. You just got a plate of spaghetti hoops. But there's a couple of things here, which you pick them up as you go along. This is showing that, yes, I understand the simplicity. I've got, first of all, I'm brave enough to do this. And I'll be honest, I kept this hidden for two months after shooting it, um, a month after shooting it even. It's one light, but the light is perfectly placed. It's metered evenly across the scene. The catch lights are in the correct spaces and the hoops. The hoops look randomly placed, but I'll tell you what, they are not randomly placed. And it's choosing the right item to put in front of the lens. And that's where it comes in. It's knowing what sells, what's important, what will conjure up that image of your childhood. And if you're British and you're 30 years old, spaghetti hoops is probably on toast during your childhood. So there's three very different price points here. And I think when you're starting out, you're probably going to be shooting for restaurants, for small chefs, for small cookbooks, and you look at maybe £150. And then it's not a case that you go up to £200, £300, £400. There is no £400 food photo shoot. Nobody has that money. It's too much for the small cafes, but it's not enough for the bigger brands. And they're going to be like, oh, that's a bit cheap. That might go wrong. We'll have to then spend another £800. So it sort of goes £150, £200. Then you jump to about £800 a day when your work is really focusing on the food and you start to understand the food. And then maybe up to 1000 1200 a day when the storytelling aspect comes into it and you start to understand it's not just making the food look good, it's the context, it's the storytelling, it's the journey. It's trying to go, look, here you are, that British beer garden, which I'd love to be in right now, we're on lockdown. It's sunset, it's 9pm on a summer's day, the trees at the back of the garden, the sun streaming through. You've got your snacks, you've got your beers, you know, it's all there. And then it's looking at this shot here, just reminds me of the continuity that you have to be able to produce it shot after shot after shot and quickly. That turnaround, you need to be able to go, right, that shot's done, scrap it, clean it, next shot down, new background, new props, bring it in, get the stylist working. You know, by this point here, you need to be working with a stylist. You can't do this by yourself. This shot is too big to produce by yourself. You need a stylist or two. And then as you start to find the styles and you start to go, oh, well, I've, I've learned the basics of food photography. What do I want to do now? What do I think looks good? And for me, it's this. This is what I think looks good. It's bold, it's graphic, and it's minimal. And that I really like. And this is where my fee sort of skyrocketed and the production costs went up. The licensing fee stayed about the same. I'm going to do a separate video on licensing coming up soon. So do subscribe if you want to see that. But this is sort of where it was. And, you know, I just thought minimal is what I want to do. Now, if you get to the stage when you're about to hit this slide in your career and you go, do you know what I like? I like these big flat lays. I want to be shooting for Marks and Spencers. I want to be doing those M&S food porn videos. Go for it. And you need to take this work to the next level. Now, I haven't done that because it's not what interests me, but it is a viable career path. So I think hopefully this sort of gives you an idea of the, the steps you can take from sort of a £150 photograph here to like an £800 shoot here, maybe a £1,200 shoot around here. And then when you really specialise going in for maybe you still charge £1,200 for the shoot, but then your production cost might be another 2000 and then your licensing might be another ten, whatever it may be. It varies massively. And by the time you get to this point, you'll know where you sit in that because you, when you need to know, you know. You know what you're worth. You know the value of your work. So I hope this has been of use to you. If you do like these videos, do subscribe. If you have any questions about this, hit comment and do hit me up on Instagram and the Facebook group because I want to do some of these videos looking at your work and showing you how you can price your work correctly. Now, I hope that's of use to you. If you want to find out more about what you think your work should be worth, do come into the Facebook group. 
I'll pop some information in there. Do find me on Instagram, send me a DM. I'll send you my email address so you can send me more information and we can sort of go from there. And I'm gonna put a video together showing a few different people who have common problems. So if I can go, right, here's 20 photographers who I feel relate to this photographer here, I'll pop something together for that. I'll see you all next time. Thank you very much.